a lot of people have been trying to start a project like the one I'm, I'm starting. And a lot of the reasons why it wasn't started is because, no, you should do this. Or, or no, you, no, you, no, you, you should do this. And then and at the end, I just embraced it. And I was like, let's just do it. No, I'll do it. All right. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Don Sell, a.k.a. Selly, who is the founder of a new website called NoHue.com, actually coming soon. And the vision for NoHue.com is to be the Amazon for Bitcoin. In addition to this, Selly is also the channel manager for BTC Sessions and the head of sales at Proof of Inc. I think you're going to enjoy today's interview, but before we get to that, we do have this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight, and even before that, I want to give a shout out to those who have been supporting the show on Fountain in the last week. Thanks to Trey, Joe W24, and user 767-51332 for streaming sats to the show, and thanks to those who sent boosts as well. I think this week's boosts were the largest of all time for the show. First of all, there's Jesse Mize with 25,000 sats. He said of last week's episode with Gabe Newland of No Waste BTC Signs, Gabe does it 100% with waste and really just donates his labor and passion for Bitcoin to reach as many Bitcoiners, meetups, and businesses as possible. And Gabe himself, in addition to streaming sats to the show like he almost always does, sent 100,000 sats and said, thank you for having me on to talk about my signs. Thank you very much to the two of you and all those who support the show by either streaming sats or sending a boost on Fountain. If you would like to support the show, you can do so as well. And if you send a boost with a message, I'll be sure to read it on the show. Now for this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight, we're going to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The Bitcoin Proof of Drink Meetup is the longest running Bitcoin meetup in Louisiana. Meetups are scheduled for the first Tuesday of each month. The next meetup will be on June 4th at 6 p.m. at the Bulldog on 4385 Perkins Road. Whether you're a curious beginner or a seasoned pleb, they have the right level of one-on-one interaction to keep you entertained and informed. Come join them for some of the best Bitcoin discussions that are available in the greater Baton Rouge area. You can find them on Twitter at BTCPODMeetup. That link is down below, along with the link to the Oshi app, which you can use to find a Bitcoin meetup near you. Now, we're going to get to our interview with Selly right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Sally, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? Yeah, let's go. Question number one, when and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? Uh, I first learned about Bitcoin um, as I was moving from uh, mortgages to financial advising, and I was day trading a lot. So like as I was doing mortgages behind that desk, I was also just like day trading. You know, you have your freedom of time to choose what you want to do. Um, so got into tra- day trading and, you know, s- started uh, catching the winds of, of Bitcoin there. Question number two, what's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish everyone understood? Uh, well, there's there's two, but the the importance of the 21 million mm. um, and the anonymity of it. Um, two, two very important tools that once you understand why they're important, like the, then you then you get Bitcoin. I think those are the two the two things that really get people um understanding it especially in a in a country where they didn't really teach finance unless you went on the college and paid for it um afterwards question number three what's the bitcoin resource you most recommend to other people bitcoin resource i mean bitcoin twitter Mm. to be honest uh that is a whole resource full of everything that you need um you're surrounded by the, the right people the right the right products and the purpose um I think that would be I mean, instead of just choosing a show, yeah. uh, I think Bitcoin Twitter, like it'll break you in faster than any just show. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and I, I need to ask a follow up here because there are so many different accounts, you know, massive accounts, 
tiny, maybe underfollowed accounts of people that, I mean, for instance, you, we'll get into it today, but you're doing so much. I don't know that you have probably uh, as many followers as you should have considering how involved you are. But are there some top accounts that you would recommend people to follow, either people that kind of run in your circle that others may not know about, or kind of the top names that you're like, if you're going to hop on, if you're going to get a Twitter after today's episode, definitely follow these few people. Well, I'm, I'm a little biased on that because I have uh, over 30 handles myself uh, oh, that wow. I run and, and different accounts. Um, honestly, like, so... And, and this is why it's biased, but BTC sessions mm-hmm. definitely is, is, is a good follow. Um, I, I help manage the channel. Um, but that is a great place as far as learning the, the different software and hardware, um, that is involved with Bitcoin. I think that's definitely a good follow because that is something that under or overwhelms people mm-hmm. when they first get here. Um, especially if they're not tech, not tech savvy, some of these things do take quite a bit to, to do right. Um, and, and Ben does a great job of, of his tutorials and showing everybody exactly what you need, um, instead of sitting in in front of the channel, you know, for like 10 hours, he'll do it in the, in the shortest time. Um, and then on, honestly, just anybody, anybody that is for adoption, um, Hmm. there's many different companies, there's many different people out there. and, And as you go through it, um, you'll find them, you'll, you'll be able to sift them out the, the longer you're with it. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and plug a whole bunch of people. I could, I could, uh, you could follow me and then you'll, you'll find everybody that I follow. I don't there know. You go. <laughs> there you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So question number four is this beyond Bitcoin. What is a resource tool or idea that's been helpful to you or your work recently? Honestly, it's the people, mm. the people, uh, that's, that's what Bitcoin is, is kind of building back. It's just meet people, go out to events, go out to meetings, go out online, uh, meet the people that are in Bitcoin. That is going to be the best resource ever. Um, and that's coming from somebody who networks in every crevice and nook and cranny of Bitcoin that I can and um, seems to be working for me. I'm making a lot of relationships with a lot of great people and a lot of the projects that I'm working on wouldn't be possible without them. Now we have our final, what we call our arbitrary but insightful question, and it's this. As a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? Mm, that's a hard one. I think why. Uh, now, I see like the why not is why, like, you know, that would be people saying, oh, why not we do this? Why not do this? But like, it's really why what's the reason for doing it what why do you want to do this and then the why nots is just something you can ignore Mm. um i think you you need to have your purpose you have your purpose and that's the why um the why nots are just reasons not to do things so i focus on the why good good question though Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart Vellus Commerce doesn't just build, they bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future proof your business in the coming age of hyper Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make Make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. At Linkster, it's not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com. Linkster, secure your future with Bitcoin. 
So Sally, we're here today to talk about all sorts of things you're doing. I, I was about to say we're we're here today to talk about all that you're doing, but we just can't do that today. There's there's <laughs> too much you're involved with. But uh, there have been a couple people in recent days who have recommended you to me. So John from Proof of Ink. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had Johnny Delgado on the show. He also recommended you uh, in the conversation afterward. And one of the things that stood out to me most, and it's where I want to start today, is what what they called the the Amazon for Bitcoin. And I've come to find out that's nohue.com under development. I'd love to hear a little bit about that to start off the conversation. What's that? What's your vision? And maybe even what's behind the name? Yeah. Um, so nohue.com, uh, the, the name, we'll start with that. It, it derived off of a meme. So there's a lot of uh, like no hue or like no you, like mm. no you do that or no you... So it's 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 a big meme within uh, Bitcoin Twitter, and I just thought it was kind of fitting because um, a lot of people have been trying to start a project like the one I'm, I'm starting, and a lot of the reasons why it wasn't started is because no, you should do this, or, or no, you, no, you, no, you, you should do this, and then and at the end I just embraced it and I was like, let's just do it. No, I'll do it. All right. Um, so nohue.com is going to be basically a big collaboration of all the different pled projects and, and all of their different passions, bringing them together um, and helping, helping them with the marketing, designing websites, fulfillment, shipping. So I have warehouses and everything out here as well, um, where I'll be bringing in a lot of product and shipping some pro- pled products, you know, the shipping costs more than what they're actually doing. So this will help them. The whole point is to, do everything that I can to help them keep on doing their passion and keep on make, you know, doing in the proof of work on, on what they're passionate about and, and keep their projects in line with their, with their values and everything and, and do everything that I can to help. Um, at the end of the day, we're rebuilding circular economies, both local and global, right? So we are not just fighting on a local level to rebuild that. It's easier to, to build from the ground up, but what we have is a huge machine that we're working against. And so I'm trying to build something where all the plebs can go together um, and get all the benefits out of having a big site like Amazon, um, but keeping it in the plebs morality, keeping everything, you know, everything that goes in it, it's all Bitcoin only. It's, it's only plebs. It's all proof of work, you know, no seed oils, like all of the stuff that you see within Bitcoin, Twitter, um, all of those values basically putting into one, but also building something to collaboratively to actually compete with Amazon to a degree. So instead of, you know, plebs going on to Amazon to buy all this stuff. They go onto this site first to start supporting the plebs and buying a Bitcoin, supporting the local economy, uh, the local circular economy within Bitcoin. Um, also down that road is it's not just going to be Amazon. Um, it's going to, it's going to have a section where uh, a whole bunch of trades people can, can put their, that accept Bitcoin, they can put them on there, like an Angie's list for Bitcoiners. So it's going to be like a whole big mecca of um, all the plebs, plebs projects, all the collaboratives, um, and just any way that we can. It's going to be a huge community is what I'm trying to build. Mm. Um, it's it, There's a lot of different aspects to it that um, as we grow, I have, I have different views for as it evolves. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be where all the plebs are going to, to support each other mm. and build, um, that economy because Bitcoin is only a tool, right? You need to rebuild the circular economies, the local and global, um, in order to make that tool work. So there's two sides of it. And so I'm building, uh, the other side that we need. So when it comes to this project, it sounds like there are tons of things. I'm curious about how you figure out what needs to happen first. And uh, I guess I, I understand after you've described how big of a project this could be, why people have pointed and said, no, you know, you know, you, um, how do you tackle something like this? And um, maybe then also if people are interested in being on the ground floor, how could someone get involved? Right. So um, what I've been doing is, is I've been working very hard with um, I also do website design, but I've been working with my developers as well. Um, and trying to make this the the cleanest um, way that we can do the site um, down the road, I do want to start doing washing. So, like, uh, I'll I'll be paying everybody out 
in non KYC um, as their orders come in, because uh, the way that I, that's the way I want it to be organized. Um, the, the biggest part of it is the networking is, is speaking with all the plebs and bringing them all together. And, and that's really what's going to make the site a success is the more the merrier. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as they're within our, our realm of what we expect from plebs. Um, yeah. Cause we do have a vetting process to get on the website. That's going to be very important because I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to have a whole bunch of seed oil foods and all of like a lot of the stuff that, 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 you know, we, we've been against. Um, so, it, it, I mean, reaching out to me, show me your products. Um, it, it, that would be the best way to, to get involved um, as also depending on what your skills are. So as, as the site builds, I'm going to need more developers, more designers, um, accountants. Uh, so this is also uh, a site that we do all the accounting for, for everybody involved as well. Um, so, you know, we, I have Bitcoin accountants who are trained to specifically get you the most Bitcoin they c- you can and keep it, mm-hmm. you know, as much as you can, especially if you're operating in a Bitcoin company, accepting Bitcoin, right. Um, this is also going to be a site that obviously accepts Bitcoin. So I'm going to be talking to developers and wallets and things like that. So there's many different avenues to get involved. Um, what I'm starting out with first. So like you, that was the initial question. Um, so I work with proof of ink. So me and John run proof of ink together. Um, and we started to do a lot of merchandising for a lot of uh, Bitcoin companies, small and big. And so we started bringing things like big BTC pins and, and a lot of other um products into the mix so now it's not just the shirt company and now we're doing pins now we're doing a whole bunch of stuff engraving um for all of the swag that all these companies need and everything like that but it's all done by bitcoiners so mm-hmm. you have bitcoin companies now able to go to a bitcoin merch- merchandising where we we can design your site we can do your taxes we can do your shirts we can do your pins all your swag so we're starting with all of those accounts and what that is is as we're bringing in bigger companies to, that we do merchandising for, we're also bringing in more companies and more things that we can do with them. Um, and through that, we're also giving each each different company uh, their own little like site, kind of like how Amazon does. And it's all going to be one place where you buy it all from. Uh, all the shipping will be a lot more centralized, which is not a word we like saying around here, but like... <laughs> Sense, but centralizing a lot of the products is actually going to help with shipping, with fulfillment, and and with reach, mm. and 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 that's what I'm trying to do, um, but also in a way that makes sense for everybody else and and helps all parties. You mentioned the fulfillment, the shipping. How do you run an operation like that? Because I think most people would agree that at least for the shop side of Amazon, because you have the whole AWS business, which is a cash cow for them, the the ability for them to fulfill orders so quickly is like the most impressive thing. For instance, I ordered something today from Amazon. It's supposed to get here later today. We'll see if it actually does. Um, hopefully, I'll, I'll order this, this item from nohue.com in the future. But ha- how do you efficiently and effectively uh, do the logistics and uh, the shipping, the delivery side, or I guess not really delivery, but that, that end of things that is very complex and that a lot of businesses don't do that well, but Amazon has mastered. Right. So um, I'm not going to say we're going to be like Amazon overnight. You know, I think, I think the, the idea is, is basically where we're starting, um, but more centralizing everything. So I have, I have warehouses here in the middle of the East coast um, I will be, as we expand, I'll be building more over on the other coast um, and we'll be building up inventory of pleb products. And that way, when you order something, it's all under one hood. And instead of going to this site and spending $10 on shipping, this site and spending $25 on shipping, this site and $10 on shipping, it, we're going to localize it all um, and and actually help so that these these plebs can push more of their product and get more of their product out and have more reach and people won't have to pay so much for shipping or, or wait so long. I don't think it's going to be like, I'm not going to be throwing drones out there, you know, sending it out to you in a day, but we will get there. Um, 
you know, we're not going to be as big as, as Amazon at first, but as we grow, everything's going to get a lot better. I think more so right now, I don't think it's the time to get it. That's a problem with plebs because plebs have low time preference for the most part. Yep. I, I think it's more so the, the cost, you know, if I can spend less Bitcoin on shipping, then I, I you know, I, then I, then that's more money. That's more Bitcoin I can use to support even more Bitcoiners. Mm-hmm. Um, and I see that, that going pretty far, um, mm-hmm. especially in a collaboration of all of us together. Well, I, I like the idea of what you're doing here. I'm looking forward to seeing it develop. Uh, probably back in either December or early January, I aired an episode with Hunter Hastings, who's more of an Austrian economics guy, less of a Bitcoiner. And he was say, he was asking the question. I think he actually asked, you know, what's going to be the Amazon of Bitcoin? And at the time, I was like, I think Amazon is probably going to be the Amazon of Bitcoin with a long enough time horizon. Like, I think all companies are going to end up holding Bitcoin, operating in Bitcoin, things like that. But then here I come find a, uh, I find out about nohue.com. So I, I love what you guys are doing. I like the idea of it. Let's move over to what you're doing uh, south of the border in Mexico and El Salvador. If you could just kind of delve into some of those things, uh, what you're seeing as you've been on the ground there and what you're looking to do to develop Bitcoin adoption in the future. So I am the director of capital for the Association of Bitcoin for El Salvador. Um most recently, I was at the the having party, um, which you know we we spent uh, a few days at the resort there. But really, getting out of the resort, um, I made sure that I spent extra time there to to get out and actually see what was going on um, on the ground there. First place we went to, we were in El Zante, um, so went to Bitcoin Beach, and it was really cool seeing all all the different bars and and. and um, everybody accepting Bitcoin there, uh, but also the market. So they had this big market um, on the street. They have all the street vendors. They're cooking food right there, um, right there on the street. Get your lunch, just mo- much like a food truck, but it's like, you know, the street vendors. A um, whole bunch of cool stuff that they've made by hand that you can get for Bitcoin. Um, but then you go, uh, if you go a little bit further down past the street vendors, they have this little park that they do a whole big thing. Um, and that was really cool. I mean, Bitcoiners making coffee right there, um, making soap. So there's beef tallow soaps that they make. There was a little, uh, a guy that was doing like all these different books, Bitcoin books. So you got the, you know, sovereign individual, Bitcoin standard, uh, but then they had all these little kid books too, like little, like to help kids learn. So, I mean, there's so much cool stuff that's going out there. They had a, a mezcal a guy doing all these different mixed drinks uh, for Bitcoin. Um, but it's really cool just seeing the market. Mm. And then also in Berlin, um, even more so, Berlin is actually building, and this is El Salvador, uh, they're building an actual local circular economy where they all produce almost everything they need within the community and everything is bought and traded for via Bitcoin. Um, it is probably the truest local circular economy with Bitcoin that I've ever seen. And it, it, it definitely is, is a model that I, I want to help duplicate. Um, and so that being said, uh, we have an event. So uh, El uh, the Association of Bitcoin for El Salvador, so we call it ASO Bitcoin, um, is actually helping organize the first Bitcoin meetup in La Paz, uh, Mexico. And where we're basically, uh, so we're calling it Bahia Bitcoin. Um, it's basically going to be like the similar to the Bitcoin beach of El Salvador. Um, so right now we're doing our first event. It's June 6th through uh, the 8th. And we're bringing a whole bunch of Bitcoin education, a whole bunch of Bitcoin products to help them, you know, uh, see the different hardwares and how to use everything, how they can use it for their business. And we're basically duplicating everything we did in El Salvador and moving it throughout the rest of uh, Latin America. Um, Who needs it the most on this side of the globe? Um, So... Yeah, uh, right now we're we're doing that event. We're accepting any sponsors and anybody who wants to to throw any money to help the cause with for adoption there. Um, a lot of good products there. With that, we're going to be doing a new event every six weeks to keep it going. Um, and we're also going to be doing a new areas in El Salvador that we're going to be launching this year as well. 
So how did you get involved with the work, I guess, at first in El Salvador? Obviously, now you're expanding to Mexico. Was that, you mentioned earlier, networking is so important. Was it just through conversation with other Bitcoiners? Was it kind of a more formal process than that? How can you kind of explain to people how you got involved in that? And I, the, part of the reason I ask is because if people are listening today and they're like, hey, how do I network? How do I get more involved? Hearing yeah. from someone who's doing it really well is very valuable. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it didn't start off that way, right? So it, it's not like it happened overnight. I've been networking and building for years. Mm -hmm. um, I retired from mortgages three years ago, and I said I would not take another job in fiat. And I committed to that, and I kept networking and networking and networking. And three years later, now I'm pushing, I'm turning down jobs. Mm -hmm. um, my My advice is just, meet everybody you can keep meeting everybody you can see what you can build together because there's always something that you can build together and you just have to always be thinking of it but also just be persistent mm. be be persistent be determined because um moving away from fiat uh it's very hard it's very hard it, it doesn't like uh, it, it's easier for some harder for others but the the whole thing about it is keep your morals. Like once you understand Bitcoin, you can't under, you can't unsee that mm -hmm. world. Um, and that was something I stayed committed to. So stay committed to your morals and stay persistent and just meet everybody. Go like, if you haven't been going out to meet meetups, go out to just even the smallest meetups, go out to some conferences, like, but like any, any Bitcoiners and plebs that you can surround yourself with, do it. Uh, those are the people who are building the next world and you want to be, if you want to be a part of it, it it's going to be something that we all build together, not mm -hmm. just one person. So yes, um, I fell into it, uh, networking, you know, I, um, I'm friends with a lot of the people in the meme factory, you know, the ones that, that sent, um, did the party down there. Um, while I was down there, I made it a point to, to meet the people who were there, uh, who were building Bitcoin country. Um, and in doing so, I, I met, I met a lot of the right people, um, had some really good conversations and everything with them while I was down there and, uh, was given an opportunity that I thought was extremely beneficial to not just El Salvador and my ventures, but just Bitcoin in general. Um, mm. my rule is if it helps Bitcoin adoption, I'm on it. Like, like if, if I can make it work, yes. Um, if it goes, if it skews from that and it goes down the other, the other coins or anything, like I won't be a part of it. Um, and I could have gone into another job, you know, like I was offered other jobs with other coins and whatever, um, as I was looking, but like, I stuck to it. I knew that Bitcoin was, was the way to go. So yeah, just stick with it. Find the people that love Bitcoin as much as you do and make beautiful things happen. Excellent. Now, in addition to that, you're, you're doing so much. One thing that we haven't even talked about, at least in the interview portion, we were talking about it before we started recording, is is the homesteading aspect of what you do. We don't need to go into those details, but I was at a graduation party a few days ago, and someone we were talking about farming. We were talking about you know, raising animals, different things like that. And some people were telling me how that's like such a, a full time job you're doing all these other things while you're also doing a bunch of stuff on a homestead. Do you have any recommendations for business owners or anyone else listening to the show about how to get things done efficiently and well, or at least uh, in a passable way, because you're doing a whole lot and it seems like you're doing it well. Um, any recommendations for just being laser focused, getting stuff done, making things happen. And it comes back to a lot of what we were talking about. Um, find the right people. Find the right people that uh, love Bitcoin as much as you do or, or love what its goal is, right? Mm -hmm. So to bring back everything that we've lost. Um, surround yourself with the right people and delegate. You know, as, as I keep on bringing on more projects and sometimes I spread myself too thin, but also at the same time, I'm able to do so because of the people behind me. Um, I have a lot of plebs that work with me. I have... Um, I have farm hands that accept Bitcoin. They, they live here with me. So when I, cause I travel a lot um, within my different 
ventures within Bitcoin. Um, but I have people here who take care of the property when I leave. And honestly, it's all about the people. Um, Bitcoin is about giving the power back to the people and anybody who accepts Bitcoin and, and understands the journey that we're going on. That's the people that you want to surround yourself with because they will do anything for you and they will do anything for Bitcoin. Hmm. Um, and that, that would be my advice. Uh, you know, at the, at the homestead, I have tons of chickens. I have things that have to be done every day, every morning. And sometimes I leave for two, three weeks at a time. Um, especially, you know, going back and forth between here and Latin America, um, just surround yourself with people who have the same goals and values as you. And it sounds kind of cliche, corny, but it's true. Well, Sally, I appreciate you sharing on the show today. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to leave the listeners with or places you'd like for people to go if they want to keep up with what you're doing? Yeah. Um, well, so lots of different things to say there, but um, as far as places to go, go down to El Salvador, um, visit more particularly uh, El Zante and Berlin and mm -hmm. see, see uh, some of the best communities that are building Bitcoin at, into their community um, and having success. I think it's, it's worth everybody to kind of go in, go there. That's kind of like our Mecca at this point um, where things are being tried and, and, and being successful. Um, but other than that, just, you know, get on Bitcoin, Twitter, find the people that you love, um, find people that support your, your ideals um, and start networking with them. Everybody has a different passion. And I, I believe that you can convert that all into being on a, a Bitcoin standard, everybody should be doing what they want to do. So find what you want to do. Um, find the plebs that are going to be behind you that can support that um, and help build what you want. I think everybody, if everybody is doing something that they're happy or doing, I think we're going to have a better world. Um, I also think that they're gonna, the people who are passionate about what they do, do an awesome job. Um, and that's, again, that's something that was taken away from us and with the previous globalization agenda um, and basically pushing everybody away from doing what they love and having the machine make everything for them. So we got to go back towards the people. All right. Well, Sally, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, buddy. See you next time. Well, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or Selly, you can find those links down in the show notes. And if you think nohue.com would be great for your business, definitely reach out to Selly. As always, keep building, keep growing. And until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any Lightning Wallet. And one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app, you can earn sats just by listening on Fountain. Check out the link in the show notes to get started with Fountain today.